kisses and feels that leave for mine. Well, we could talk about different ways to sweeten your coffee, or we could talk song. Brandy Carlisle has won the Grammy for Best Rock Song with Broken Horses. I was hoping for that. My hopes and my wishes came true. Congratulations. It's a great song. It's a cowboy western rock and roll, but with the typical Brandy Carlisle perspective on stuff. Let's look at the intro that is a statement in itself. Chords. D, power chord. We don't really know if it's major or minor. Could be D minor seven. Could be F major over D, which is basically the same thing as the second one. G and back to D, power chord. This is something that Henning calls the wanted dead or alive trick. It's a way to establish a mode that is different from the typical Ionian or Aeolian mode. What we are doing here is we are establishing D Dorian as the key of the song. We are not giving away too much information though, we are giving away the main information of a key, which is where the four major and the five major is. The four major and the five major of D Dorian, so you would have to translate it back to C Ionian. The four and the five of C Ionian are F major and G major. And by playing F major and G major over D, you establish your intention to write a song in Dorian. Now, this Dorian mode doesn't necessarily have to include the D in minor. It could also include the D in major, which is what will happen in the chorus of the song quite a bit. The one a dead or alive trick. If you have no idea what the one a dead or alive, well, I just told you, right? I shouldn't have. Well, just imagine I didn't. And of course, now you want to know all about the one a dead or alive trick, which, by the way, is much more complex than what I've just told you. And by the songwriting course. By the songwriting course, go to the harmony section and watch the Dorian trick lesson. Or is it called the one dead or alive trick lesson? I don't really know. By the songwriting course, it's going to be great. Oh, by the way, it's not out yet. So wait a couple of weeks, come back to this video, watch it, then by the songwriting course, or do it the other way around. This is the intro. Then we have got verse number one, which is... I want my father's leather on the inside of my skin. I'm a tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again. Is it? No, I think they still are playing it in D power chord. D. C major. G with B in bass, so we are clearly in the key of C major or D Dorian. By the way, in terms of chord functions, this is of course uh, two, don't know if it's major or minor, one major, five major with three in bass, and then F, F and C in a very nice rhythm. And I even think that the bass player does not play F and C, it's only the guitar arrangement, so the Bass player actually plays FC, FC, I think. Yeah, definitely. So it's FC, FC, FC. The rhythm played there, the harmonic rhythm, so that means the rhythm in which the chords changes, is what I call the 3 3 3 3 2 2. 3 3 3 3 2 2. It has to do with eighth notes and their placements within the bar. Three eighth notes. Groups of three and groups of two eighth notes. Three, 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 two, two. Dum, bam, 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 bam. Over two measures. Okay? Dun, 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 dun. This is so super powerful because this is where the band comes in really hard, right? They do all the hits. 
and go directly into the second verse, which is basically verse B. So not second verse, we are still in the first verse, but it's the second half of the first verse. In terms of melody, we have got a really super powerful, and of course Brandy does it far better than I, super powerful high D in the melody line. In the melody, we have got a strong presence of the F note, which doesn't necessarily mean that the D is supposed to be interpreted as, as minor, because in the blues scale, we have got a lot of blurring the lines between major and minor, okay? So this F, F sharp, could it, could it not, is still not perfectly resolved in a way. It's just a bluesy line. That spans over the whole octave, right? Starting on the high D, ending on the D and octave below. So it's really rangy and it's, of course, a show-off line in terms of vocal performance, which, of course, acts to the effect that this first very powerful line has, okay? A high D is something to knock you off your feet. Verse B, remember that we are still in the first verse, but we are now entering the second part of the first verse, has got other harmonies that will remain the official and important harmonies of the verse. D, power chord, C, F, major, C. So remember in the first half of the verse we had D power chord C, G over B, and this G, go, G, go, G, go, three, 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 two, two, for F and C. Now we have got D power chord, C major, F major, and C. So in terms of functions, two, major, minor, we're not sure, two power chord, one major, four major, one major. The melody is the same as in the first half of the verse. Don't think that you can come to me without your Sunday best. You had better call your priest and hope the devil gets the rest before I do. And this before I do, this before I do, is the transition to the intro. And this plays between verses and also between chorus and verse, I think. There is a melody as well, so it's before I do. Something like this. So it's, again, a very bluesy, just ad libby thing that shouts into this intro, this interlude that is the transition between one verse and the other. Then we have got the second verse, and the second verse has got the chord progression of the second half of the first verse twice. So, D power chord, C major, F major, C major, repeats. D power chord, C major, F major, C major. And again, to the intro. Ah, uh, sorry. From G we go back to D power chord. This is everything that happens um, up until the chorus starts. Verse 1 with the special first half of the verse introducing a chord progression that we abandon quite early. This D power chord, C major, G over B and F, C, F, C, F, C. And then the second half of the first verse introduces the C power chord, C, D power chord, C major, F and C major that we will find in the second verse twice. 
the intro. So D, F over D, G over D is something that we have between all parts up until that point. In terms of melody, apart from the fact that of course the melody adapts to the words and to the word stresses and to the metric rhythm of the words where necessary and it has a whole octave as a range, I can't really tell you anything more about it. I Just those three things. Bluesy, big range, rather high, even for a female singer, and loose metric rhythm. We do recognize the phrases that repeat, but they adapt to the metric rhythm of the words. The lyrics are astounding. We are going to talk about the lyrics later. Chorus, and I'm doing this deliberately here, takes everything in the accompaniment up an octave. Tethered in wide open spaces And fields that leave for miles Right into the barren of a to the intro. Bah, what a killer chorus. Chords first. D major for the first time in the song. So it's Dorian major. This is something that we see in One of Dead or Alive and a lot of cowboy songs in general. D major. F over C in bass. B minor seven flat five and B flat major seven. There is a not really chromatic, but sometimes chromatic bass movement downwards. So we start with D major, then we've got whole step down to C and bass under F major, then chromatic movement over B to B flat. In terms of chord functions, we've got two, Four, seven, minor seven, flat five, and flat seven, major seven. How cool is that? Flat seven, major seven. This is actually modal interchange at its best. Taking the B flat from probably the D Aeolian mode, right? From F major or D minor where we have got the B major 7 as a chord, taking this and introducing it as a foreign chord that ends up defining the chorus. Tethered in wide open spaces and fields that leave for miles. What's that in terms of melody? F sharp, so the major third as the melody note. F sharp, E, F sharp, G, D, D, C. A, here we've got the F, not the F major anymore. So, uh, sorry, not the F sharp anymore. We've got the F. Ending on the D, that of course is the three of B major. So the melody is. Then we've got B flat major, A minor, and D power chord. Right into the barrel of a girl. 
Right in F. I'm talking melody now. Um, no, I should have talked chord functions first. So again, we've got flat seven major, six minor, and two power chord. Melody. With a flat seven of A minor as the melody note. So we've got F as the rock solid note over B sharp. Right into the barrel of a... And then we go to A minor with G, with a flat seven as the melody note, and D, C. And then we've got A as the melody note over D, making it the fifth. And of course, you can't really sing major or minor third there because this would render the whole concept of a power chord obsolete. So it's the five in the melody as well. This is not the end of the chorus. Mending up your fences with my horses running. Probably my favorite section of the song. Those three major chords, all a whole step away from each other. I always want to anticipate the B flat because the vocals do that, but the arrangement doesn't do it. So again, we've got B major, A minor, then D major, this time with major, C major, B flat major. So the chorus, we could argue, is not in D Dorian anymore. You could say that the chorus is in D Aeolian, doing modal interchange on the D itself and turning this into a major chord. Why? Because in D Aeolian, you would have the B flat. Remember that in the first four chords of the chorus. We have this first regular B, then B flat movement. So we could talk of a modulation from D Dorian major to D Aeolian major. I don't know if you can say this. Can you say D Aeolian major? Probably not. But by turning this B minor seven flat five into B flat major seven and introducing the B flat as a new chord, firstly talking about modal interchange, but modulating to D Aeolian or F major, if you will, F Ionian, we do modulation, I think. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. I got a bit carried away here. We haven't talked about the melody of the second half of the chorus. Mending up. Mending up your fences with my... So this is basically a repetition of what was before. Right into the barrel of a gun. So this time it's... Right in, mending up your fences with my... Horse. To run back to the intro. This is music, I can tell you. Verse number two, in terms of harmony and melody, offers nothing new. Chorus number two, in terms of chords and melody, offers nothing new. We go out of chorus number two like this. Only broken horses know to run. Two bars of D power chord that offer a transition towards this 
I wouldn't call it solo because there isn't a solo instrument playing. I'd say instrumental buildup. Interlude? Not really. It's kind of an instrumental primary bridge, offering a new chord progression that we are going to talk about in a second, and building up very, very heavily. In order, let me tell you this, to break down verse number three, a thing that we have observed quite a bit already, and we are only in the third song analysis. Let's look at the chord progression for this instrumental C section, for this instrumental primary bridge. We have got D, we have got C, we have got E minor, we have got F. And I believe the D is power chord. This plays for four times. D, C, major, E minor, F, D, C, E minor, F, I wore my father's leather on the E, and so on. In terms of chord function, we have got two power chord, one major, something that we knew already, introducing a new chord, which is the three minor, E minor, the three minor, as kind of a reharmonization of this C major. You can use the three minor chord in substitution for the one major chord if you want to add a feeling of movement, of suspense, of motion forward. In the songwriting course, we call it the parked car with the engine running. This is the three minor chord. It's in a way resolved, but still wanting to go somewhere. In this occasion, wanting to go to the four, to the subdominant chord. So we have got two, one, three minor, four. Two, one, three minor, four, two, one, three minor, four. Rather unusual chord progression, but great in terms of expectations, of building up expectations, if you want to go somewhere, which they definitely do for the last verse. That is the same as the first verse, in terms of lyrics and in terms of chord progression. Remember that in verse number one, we introduce the chord progression that we abandon and never find again. Well, here we do. It's this D, C, over B and same lyrics. I wear my father's leather around the inside of my skin. I'm a tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again. Don't feel that you can come. And the second half of the verse again is the one with D power chord, C major, F major, and C major. We are leaving the third verse, the breakdown verse that then of course builds up with the last instrumental, let's call it intro interlude, D, F over D, G over D, D, and with the last chorus. The last chorus is basically the same as the two choruses before, ending on only broken horses know to run. D power chord. We've looked at the chords, so the prominent keywords would be Dorian major and modal interchange or modulation. And we've looked at the melody that is very bluesy, that blurs the lines between F and F sharp, and that offers a big range. That is very suited for the words which we are going to look at here in the last section of the song analysis. Let's talk about lines in power positions. The first line in your song has got a power position. It's the first thing that people hear about the song. In terms of meaning, it is the line that sets the scene. I wear my father's leather on the inside of my skin. I have tried to find out what it means. And there are two very disturbing interpretations. Disturbing interpretation number one is the leather, meaning the gun leather. So the, is it, in, in Germany you would call it holster, I don't really know the, the English word. I will 
make sure to edit the word into the video here. Something that you use to put your gun in. Let's just say that the line means I'm so used to guns because my father told me how to use them that I'm wearing this gun leather on the inside of my skin. So it's part of my body, meaning beware of me, meaning be careful and don't treat me like shit. The second, even more disturbing interpretation of this line is leather as the leather belt. And then I wear my father's leather on the inside of my skin becomes an even more overwhelming image. I've been beaten by my father so many times that the leather belt has become part of my skin. So meaning the bruises and the scar tissue on my back or wherever are so part of me that they are now on the inside of my skin instead of on the outside. <laughs> what a way to start to song. I'm a tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again. So that means I've seen shit, but you are not going to push me around anymore. In terms of rhyming pattern, this is a very clear, well, not very clear, but an indicator for an AA rhyme. I wear my father's leather on the inside of my skin. I'm a tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again. Skin and again form an almost rhyme. I'm a tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again is another booster line, and it's the second line of the verse, of the song. First of all, the double meaning of the word tried. Okay, I'm a tried and weathered woman, so I'm an experienced or even, well, a woman that has seen things, but I won't be tried again. So I won't be tempted again. I won't be challenged again. Double meaning of the word tried. If we look at alliterations and start, starting sounds of words, it's tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again, of course. Same word means same beginning sound, but we've got three words starting on a W and creating this woo sound. I'm a tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again. And this is something that Champions League songwriters will consider when writing words for their lines. Which words go well... I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm using whoop words. Which words go well with each other? Because I'm a Champions League songwriter. This, this must be the reason. I'm a tried and weathered woman, but I won't be tried again. This is something... And of course, in terms of interpreting the line, it adds to this, I've seen stuff repeating itself because I'm repeating a sound. Don't think that you can come to me without your Sunday best. Literal meaning, don't think you can come to me without being dressed properly. But it's basically, you have to bring your A game if you want to compare to me or if you want me to hang out with you. Don't think that you can come to me without your Sunday best, so be the best person you can. You had better call your priest and hope the devil gets the rest before I do. Okay, so first confess hope the devil gets you before I do, because what I will do to you is far worse than what the devil is going to do to you. Now we know that Brandy Carlisle is um, a, a homosexual woman, an openly gay woman, that um, makes the song a bit harder to analyze, but why wouldn't she just tell the story of an abused woman by a man, okay? It doesn't have to be Brandy herself. This is an empowering song by a woman that tells, I think it has to be a man, that tells a man not to push her around anymore and to kind of be ready for what's next. I have worn the jester's bells and I have banished with the fools. This is words you wouldn't hear in pop music very often. I had to Google them myself sometimes. The jester's bells are the, the fool's bells. This is the fool's cap with the, with the bells. So I have worn this, I have made a fool of myself, and I have banished with the fools. I have worshipped at the altar of the puppet master's rule. That basically means I have been a puppet for far too long. I have listened to other people that have told me what to do and that have given me directions and I have been their fool, I have been their puppets for quite too long. Also, this imagery of the altar, 
also looking back at the priest in verse number one, adds another totally interesting dimension to that song. So it's in a way critical of religion as well. I have held my tongue too many scenes before the final act with my children in the cheap seats and a zipper on my back. So I've been quiet for far too long, but enough of this. Thanks to you, no thanks to you. This is verses one and two. As I said in the melody analysis, the words give the metric rhythm and the words tell us where the notes are placed. Chorus. Tethered in wide open spaces, talking about booster lines. What an amazing image is that? In wide open spaces, but still tethered, okay? I still have got a leash around me. Tethered in wide open spaces and fields that lead for miles, right into the barrel of a gun. If we talk about power words for certain genres, then barrel of a gun is a power word for a country rock song. Mending up your fences with my horses running wild, only broken horses know to run. The memoirs of Brandy Carlisle are also called Broken Horses. I haven't read them yet, but it's just an amazing image, those broken horses. So it basically means you have to be broken in order to run, right? The broken ones are the ones that run. Only broken horses know to run. Deep shit. Verse number three, the one after chorus number one. I have ever so politely treaded softly for your grace. I have whispered through the tears and pleaded sweetly to your face. So again, I have been too kind for too long. It is time to spit you out like lukewarm water from my mouth. Another favorite line of mine, another booster line for verse number three. I will always taste the apathy, but I won't pass it down. It dies with you. That basically means, yes, I'm a broken woman and I have suffered you for long enough, but I won't pass it down to our children. Our children won't suffer the same as I have. So this dies with you. This apathy that I am now forced to feel dies with you. Then chorus number two, then instrumental section where there are no lyrics, and then last chorus. We haven't talked about rhyming pattern in the chorus. Tethered in wide open spaces and fields that lead for miles, right into the barrel of a gun. Mending up your fences with my horses running wild. Only broken horses know to run. So if we talk one super long line and one regular line, one super long line and one regular line, we would have the rhyming pattern A, B, A, B. If we talk three lines that are approximately the same length, so tethered in wide open spaces and fields that lead for miles, right into the barrel of a gun, we would have an X, A, B rhyme pattern because the first line doesn't rhyme with anything. Now, this is something rather common in wordy music in which the lyrics get a lot of attention. You have the verses with A, A, B, B rhyme pattern because the lines basically go together. And in the chorus where you change the metric rhythm, you also change the rhythmical, sorry, the rhyming pattern in order to add variation and also in order to create a sense of moving forward tethered in wide open spaces and fields that lead for miles, wants something after this, ride into the barrel of a gun. Still, we have no resolution that only comes with the second half of the chorus. Mending up your fences with my horses running wild, only broken horses know to run. Okay, it's even in the metric rhythm, this play with the expectations and the play with the resolutions. We haven't talked about, and this is going away from lyrics and going into melody analysis once again, because I find it so important. We haven't talked about placement of the beginning of the melody in verse and in chorus. I wear my father's leather. This is pickup. The second syllable is on the one. I wear my father's leather on the inside of my skin. The chorus is on the one. Tethered in wide open spaces. Which again 
serves as a great contrast between verse and chorus. This is a song that touches me quite a bit and that moves me quite a bit. I hope my analysis was appropriate, especially in terms of lyric analysis, because it's not a very easy topic. It's not something that you make fun of. It's not something that you tread lightly around to use a line from the song. If you liked it, please make sure to subscribe, to like the video, to tell me in the comments if you like specific songs that I can then cover and analyze. I guess we have talked song. You can talk about coffee sweetness again. Gathered in wide open spaces and fields that leave for my